So I spent the last couple of days trying to diagnose a uh, wheel bearing problem, or what I thought was a wheel bearing problem, on my MG. Uh, to my old ears, it sounded uh, exactly like uh, a wheel bearing going out uh, at speed at around 40 to 50 miles an hour. There was a uh, like a wah 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 sound. I know you all have heard it before, and uh, so took the wheel wheel apart, wheel bearing apart, trying to figure it out, and of course I couldn't. Took my daughter on a test drive, had her sit in the left seat here, and uh, told her to stick her head out the window, see if she can figure out where the sound was coming from, and she's like, Dad, that, that sound's coming from uh, somewhere in the vehicle. So she puts her head down on the trans tunnel, and says, yeah, it's coming from right under here. Uh, so I jacked up the car, got underneath, and lo and behold, the rubber boot here that holds the front half of the prop shaft to the, or basically just protects the prop shaft uh, splines that are in the middle there from getting dirt and debris in there is all loose and coming apart. So as I was driving, this was spinning and then bouncing and hitting against the trans tunnel. So let's uh, pop this drive shaft off and uh, replace it and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, to do this job we'll be following uh, 9B1 uh, propeller shaft removal and replacement in uh, the Bentley manual and also 9C1 here which is uh, propeller shaft dismantling and reassembly. Uh, we obviously won't be touching any of the U-joints uh, so we'll leave that alone. Uh, I'll just be removing this rubber boot here. When you're dismantling the flanges uh, use a marker or um, some type of sharp uh, blade or something and, and mark the flanges on the front and the back uh, to make sure you can put it back in the in the proper orientation. So we're going to start at the back here and use a 9 16th socket and wrench to uh, take off this back half of the drive shaft. So it's easiest to do this with the back wheels jacked up off the ground so you can spin the drive shaft and get to all the bolts, but you can do it uh, with some uh, with some U joints and uh, extensions to your 3 8 ratchet and get to all the uh, bolts to be able to loosen them up and take them off. Now it would have been nice if the engineers would have given you enough space to get this the back half of the shaft out without having to do the front U-joint, but they didn't because it interferes with the differential. Um, you could possibly clock the differential, twist it up, and get yourself some space, but that's more of a hassle than it's worth. Just uh, come up here to the front, and you can take off the four bolts. They're still uh, 9 16 uh, four bolts and nuts that uh, attach this front half of the uh, prop shaft. Once you get the front of the drive shaft disconnected from the transmission, you can push up on the front and then tilt the whole assembly down in the back in order to get yourself some space to be able to pull the shaft out. And with the assembly out of the vehicle, you can get a better look at uh, the damage here. Uh, you can see that this rubber boot is just completely destroyed. Um, this is an aftermarket uh, install. The original, I think, came with metal clips uh, on the front here and the back of this uh, boot or gaiter. Um, but uh, this has been installed with some zip ties and I'll just end up using zip ties again. Before you pull the two uh, halves apart, make sure that you mark it. Uh, this should be balanced from uh, a previous uh, install or refurbishment or from the factory. So you want to keep the splines in the proper uh, orientation. So I've just gone and marked it with a red pen here so I know how to put it back together 
and then you can uh, slide the two halves apart. Once you get the halves apart, just inspect the splines, make sure that there's no obvious damage, um, and also uh, make sure the grease looks in, like it's in good condition, or you, if it doesn't, you can always uh, wipe it all off and re-grease it. Uh, mine looks really good. There's no, there's no grit in the grease, or it doesn't look like there's been any intrusion of uh, dirt. Um, this rubber boot failed only several miles ago, so it's not like I drove on it a long time with this thing uh, having failed. So we're gonna we're gonna just leave the grease. I'm just gonna make sure that it's evenly distributed around the splines, and uh, then I'm gonna put on the new boot. The new boot I got is right here. And it'll go on. There's a big end and a small end. The big end will go on towards the front of the vehicle, and then the small end will uh, tie around this this thinner part of the shaft. So I slid the small end of the boot onto the back half of the shaft first, and then I will feed the front half on and and put it put the boot around uh, the outside. Make sure you align your markings that you made earlier. And uh, I will leave it. I'm not going to tighten down any uh, zip ties on the boot until I get it installed in the vehicle. To get the fat end around uh, the drive shaft, you might need to use some type of plastic pry tool or a flathead screwdriver. Just be careful you don't put a hole in the new rubber boot. And also, I use some of this uh, rubber conditioner uh, from three in one and just uh, rub it all over the new boot just to condition the rubber so maybe it'll last a little longer. While the prop shaft is off the vehicle just uh, do a good check of these U-joints make sure that there's no play in them there shouldn't be any uh, wobbling or anything uh, they should move freely back and forth and side to side uh, the bearing should uh, shouldn't feel gritty or like there's any substance in there. The rubber should be in good shape around these if if they're if they have a grease fitting like this one does right in here, then you can you can. Um, Use this as a good time to re-grease the fitting and also just make sure that that one again moves freely without any binding or uh, problems. When you're putting the drive shaft up into place, uh, it can either go on uh, in one orientation or basically 180 out of that orientation. So you might have to spin the flange here to match the transmission output uh, to make the bolt holes line up. So uh, make sure you uh, reuse your markings that you made earlier to uh, line it up the right way and not 180 out from uh, the orientation it should be put back together in. Torque down the front bolts and nuts to 35 foot-pounds before you attach the rear flange to the uh, differential. Then just spin the drive shaft um, until the bolt holes for the rear flanges line up and you can uh, start inserting the rear bolts and uh, attaching the nuts. When you're putting it all back together you can probably get to two bolts and tighten those down to torque specs. Uh, then you'll need to jack up the car so you can rotate the uh, axle 180 and get to the other two bolts. Once you've got the uh, bolts and nuts torqued down to 35 foot pounds, then you, you're pretty much done. You just gotta lower the car back down and take it for a test drive.